Hi, this is Colette Williams and I'm going to show you how to set up a bitmatch search profile today using Neocera. Before we get into the technical steps using Neocera, let's talk a little bit about the process. The very first step is really going to take place between you and your clients. You're going to sit with your clients and determine what are the best keywords and key phrases that describe your client's business that are going to be used as um, search terms in the bitmatch search profile. These keywords should be as descriptive as possible. You want to avoid um, generic terms or codes as much as possible. You're going to want to use exactly those keywords that describe the client's products or services that they sell. We'll talk a lot more about keywords later on, but this is really the first step. You sitting down with the client and taking down that information um, that is ultimately going to be the basis of the search profile. The next step is then to submit those keywords and key phrases using Neocera. We're going to do that step together today in this demonstration. Once we've received your keywords, within 24 hours you'll get a confirmation from us. The confirmation will let you know that the profile is online. We will have tested the search profile and given you a sense of the average number of bid matches the client can receive per day. We'll also give you some suggestions and during this process we will also add in any kind of wildcard, proximity statements, any kind of Boolean logic necessary to make sure that the client only receives those bids that they're interested in. Our search strategists work together with you to create the best possible profile for your clients and they'll give you recommendations and feedback for every single profile that you create. Once the profile is online, your client will start to receive their bid matches and of course clients can change their, their search profiles as often as they want. So we'll also talk a little bit about the editing process um, involved in changing keywords, adding additional keywords, maybe adding some restrictions to the profile. So the two steps highlighted in blue are the ones that we'll actually review today. So let's talk about how to create a brand new search profile. There are really six steps involved. The first step is to determine what the email address is going to be of the person receiving the bid match results. And it could be multiple people. Next, you're going to decide what databases are to be included, what FSG categories are to be included, what geographic regions are to be included, and then we get to the keywords and you can add any additional comments that you have. Let's take a look in Neocera how that process looks. I've opened up a client here in Neocera that's a brand new client that has just been entered into the system. We see the basic company information at the top. In the right hand panel, if I scroll down a little bit, we'll see the bid match panel. Currently no profile has been set up yet, but what I can do is I can click on the setup profile link and that will open up the six steps that we just talked about. The very first step is to identify the email address to be used for the bitmatch recipients. Mine is set up with a generic email address that we use internally for testing. You of course would set up a real email address for your clients. You can put in multiple email addresses and simply separate them with a comma. So if you want to add a second email address, put it in there. And you can add as many email addresses as allowed within 250 characters. Longer email addresses may mean that you can put in less of them. Shorter email addresses means you might be able to put in more of them. So put in as many email addresses as 250 characters allows. Next, you're going to determine what kind of format do we want the bid matches to be delivered in to the client. The most popular is the webmail format, which means that we're going to post the bid matches for the client to a private web page that they can access without a username and password. They can access real easily and probably should bookmark uh, where their private bid matches are going to be posted. We will post up to 30 days worth of bid matches. So if a client is not able to look at their bid matches today or they were not able to look at them yesterday, yesterday, then tomorrow they'll be able to pick up those bid matches. Alternatively to the webmail method is the HTML method. Generally speaking, we don't recommend this method anymore. The way the HTML method would work is that a client would receive all the bid match results in one large email format. Um, unfortunately, spam filters, virus checkers tend to eliminate a lot of these types of bid matches. So we don't recommend the HTML method. The web method is really the ideal way of um, posting your bid matches. 
The second step, as we discussed, is choosing your data sources. We have six different data sources that you can choose from, and let's go through them in a little bit more detail. There's either federal bid opportunities, state and local bid opportunities, or foreign opportunities. Our federal bid opportunities come from four different sources. One, of course, is the FedBizOps database, which contains, generally speaking, bids greater than $25,000 in value. These bids are from a wide variety of federal agencies, both Department of Defense and um, civilian agencies, um, in both the commodities and the services area. So this is a broad-based database. The DLA database, on the other hand, is only commodity-based. You won't find any service contracts in the DLA database. The DLA database contains all the bids coming out of the depot centers and generally speaking are less than $25,000 in value, although it varies also. Unfortunately, there are a number of federal agencies that simply don't publish in FedBizOps. They have their own website and they post their own bids on their own website. Outreach Systems gathers bids from all these federal agencies and puts them together in one database that we call our small database. The reason we called it our small database is from many, many years ago when only small um, dollar value opportunities were posted on the agency's website. These days we actually see large dollar values as well, so the name is a little bit of a mystery misnomer, but essentially know that this database contains everything um, that is not otherwise found in FedBizOps or the DLA database. Last but not least, we also offer the Bluetops database, which is really a database of contract awards that have already been issued in excess of $5 million in value. And the reason to include those would be for subcontracting opportunities. So if your client is looking for subcontracting opportunities, they may be interested in taking a look at the Blue Tops database. Our state and local database is made up of thousands of state, local, hospital, um, and other types of local municipalities. Um, they're all gathered in our USA BID database and um, our um, researchers put all the data together in one consolidated place. Um, then of course we've got the foreign trade opportunities. Foreign trade opportunities is made up primarily of the Merck's database, which is the Canadian equivalent to the FedBizOps, and the OJ, which is the European equivalent to the FedBizOps. So these two particular journals are fairly um, large in size. There's a fair number of bids coming out of Canada in the Merck's database and a fair number of bids coming out of the European Union in the OJ database. And all that's included in the foreign trades opportunities. Beyond these two larger data sources, we also have a variety of other foreign um, agencies that we track. So these are essentially the databases that you need to be aware of. Um, on average, we get about 2,800 bids a day, and that's every single day of the week, seven days a week. Um, the bids are abstracts, they're not the full bid packages. So keep that in mind when you're creating um, keywords. Um, because we're not matching against a full bid package. We're only matching against the abstract, which is a condensed version of the bid package, of course. Um, on average, about 50% of the bids that we receive every single day are federal opportunities. About 25% are state and local, and 25% are international. That's an, it's a rough breakdown of the data. All right. So when you're setting up a search profile, you're going to want to make sure that your client can indeed compete internationally. If they cannot compete internationally, then don't turn on the foreign trade opportunities. If they're primarily interested in state and local, make sure you check state and local. If you don't check any of the check boxes here, then your client will search everything. So make sure that if the client can only match or only is interested in maybe matching against the FedBizOps database and the state and local database, that you only check those particular databases. The third step takes us to limiting our search to certain federal supply groups. If your client is a janitorial company, you may want to only have them search in categories S, Y, and Z. That is assuming that they are a janitorial services company. On the other hand, if they are a janitorial supplies company, you may want to have them search in category 79. So try to um, 
hone in the keywords into those categories where the appropriate bids might be posted. Keep in mind that buyers sometimes will misclassify a bid or a bid will have many different facets to it um, and it, therefore it may be categorized in a different category due to another facet of the bid. Um, so generally speaking, I would recommend including more supply groups to search rather than less just to have a broader spectrum, but I would never recommend searching across the board because a keyword can so easily cause a mismatch in a category that's completely unrelated. Um, so choose your federal supply groups. Your A through Z, of course, are your service categories. Your 10 through 9, 9 are your commodity categories. 99, generally speaking, is a great category to include because it's the miscellaneous category. Not only do buyers often classify things as 99 if they don't have a specific category that they can classify things in, uh, but also things sometimes just get misclassified there. So 99 is a great category. Whatever categories you check here, those are the categories that the client will search in exclusively. So again, if we have a janitorial supplies company, and for some reason or another, there's a general janitorial supply bid being categorized by the buyer in FSG group 48, which is technically supposed to be valves, your client would miss it. So be aware that these serve as restrictions. On the other hand, while there is a slight chance that the client might miss a misclassified bid, there is, you're gonna give much more pinpointed results by at least honing your client into some of these categories. So I would always recommend picking and choosing a, a fair number of categories without searching cover to cover. Step four takes us to the geographic limitations. Um, and again, if you've got a services-based company, I would recommend that you limit your clients to a region where they can realistically service. Um, most service companies, let's take again the example of a janitorial company, cannot necessarily offer their services across um, the country or even internationally. So find those geographic regions where your clients can realistically service. Um, if you didn't include the foreign trade opportunities database, then you're automatically just searching inside the United States because all the other opportunities are US based opportunities. So you don't need to specify all of the US if the foreign trade opportunities are not selected anyway. Um, you only really need to pick your geographic regions if it's less than the US. Um, or if you did include foreign trade opportunities, if there's only certain countries that the client is interested in. Um, commodity, oops, my apologies. Commodity based bids can generally speaking be shipped all across the country, but again, check with your clients to make sure that that meets what their capabilities are. In the interface, you can either pick and choose certain states or you can use one of our geographic um, regions. And by simply choosing New England states, the states that fall within that region will be automatically selected for you. Similarly, we've got some international um, categories as well that you can choose. And again, similar to our FSG restrictions, if there is a bid for that is published in South Dakota for the janitorial supplies, if you did not select South Dakota, your client would not match on it. So keep that in mind. All right, which takes us to step number five, the most important step, and that is the entering of the keywords. So let's talk about keywords a little bit. The best search terms that you can come up with are those phrases that specifically describe your client's product or service. Um, saying something like, my client offers managerial services. That does not fully describe what it is that your client does. Is that construction management? Is that um, computer programming management? Is that human resources management? It is best to describe very specifically what it is that your client is doing. And you kind of want to imagine being a buyer. How would a buyer purchase something. Um, if you simply put in their office supplies as a keyword, is that really how a buyer is going to buy um, stationery? If they want to buy stationery, they're not going to say office supplies. They're going to say stationery. 
or if they need a specific type of computer, they're not just going to say, you know, ADP supplies. They're going to say the type of computer that it is that they're interested in. So imagine how a buyer might want to buy your client's product and services and how would they write that bid because that's what you want to match against. Remember that we're matching against the actual keywords that are published in the abstract. So how do you come up with the best keywords for your clients? Sometimes clients have a hard time really describing what it is that they do. So we have created a number of sample search profiles on our website. Let me show you our sample search profiles real quick. We have a really large array of sample profiles. Um, that you can choose from. So if your client happens to be that janitorial company, what you might want to look is at our janitorial services um, link and you'll see all the different ways that bids have previously been published um, for various janitorial services. So this is a great place to look. Keep in mind that if you send us a client um, and you say this is a janitorial company and the keywords that they want to use is janitorial services. That's great, but we won't necessarily add keywords such as graffiti cleaning or carpet cleaning in there unless you specifically tell them. Our search strategist will only work with the keywords that you've provided to us. We will not assume that your client can do additional things. Instead, we refer you to the sample profiles. And if your client can't necessarily do everything that's within the sample search profile, for example, let's take a look at that janitorial service profile again. If your client doesn't do any high pressure cleaning, they don't have the equipment for that, then just when you cut and paste this profile in, remove some of the things that your client cannot do um, so that the profile is tailored to your client's capabilities. Um, as I mentioned, there's a large variety of sample profiles that we've posted to our website. If there is an industry that we haven't covered that you frequently encounter, please let us know. We're always adding new search profiles to our listing here. And then, of course, you can also take a look at your client's own website. Often they've done a great job on their own website identifying those keywords um, that describe their business. They want to advertise their services. So a client's own website is a great resource to use to find keywords to use in a search profile. Here are some examples of good keywords. Small arms maintenance. We know exactly the type of maintenance the client is doing. Vehicle maintenance. Again, it hones in exactly the type of maintenance that the client is, is interested in. Fire extinguisher maintenance. Very good term. Tree maintenance. You can see that these four different variations of maintenance would give completely different bid results. Using the simple keyword of maintenance is too generic. It would give you all sorts of matches, not only the four that are shown here, but also a wide variety of other matches. So try to be as specific as you possibly can without getting too specific. It's a fine balance and we again will work with you on trying to find the right keywords and we'll also give you feedback and recommendations. The word or the phrase project management is probably one of the most common phrases that we see in search profiles, but project management is used in every single industry. So it covers all types of bids. If your client is more into the construction project management, then let's identify that. If they're more into system analysis type of project management, again, identify that. Transportation project management. Let's make sure we put these keywords together, otherwise the client will match on all these types of project management and if they only do construction management then they certainly aren't going to want to look at system analysis project management. And that also is true for program management. I would say project management and program management are probably two of the most common key phrases that we see um, and yet they they produce a lot of mismatches and bad results for the clients. We recommend that you enter the keywords without any logic. Our search strategist, again, will add the wildcards and the logic as appropriate. If you do decide to add your logic, then we won't touch your keywords. Then we will do it exactly the way you've entered it, even if it's not necessarily the way we would recommend. But we assume that if you send us a search profile with your logic pre-entered in, then that's based upon your knowledge and your discussion with the client, and we don't want to overwrite that. If you simply send us the keywords, keywords, which is what we recommend, which is much simpler for you as well, then we will do the work of adding the wildcards and the logics. 
Along those same lines, please don't ent um, enter in partial keywords. Like if you want to search for the, the word um, transportation maintenance, for example, don't send us transport mains. Again, we don't know if this is a certain phrase within the industry. We will um, make sure that we wildcard words appropriately. So please don't send us partial words. Um, we, we simply don't know if that's a specific term within your client's industry that needs to stay exactly as is. And then for our search strategists, because they do review every single profile that's being submitted, um, we ask that you don't put all the keywords on the same line. It becomes really difficult to read if it just becomes this one huge run-on sentence. We don't know what keywords relate to what keywords anymore. So it's best to enter in the keywords one line at a time. Let's take a look and see how, to, how we might be doing that. Here's our how our keywords would be. Our client is in the shredding business. So we might put in document shredding, document destruction, whoops. Um, document storage. All these keywords are put in as their own term. If you put it in as one long continuous sentence, we don't really know if that's, do, you know, what what word relates to what. So please put them in one phrase at a time. And actually, let's take a look at the sample search profile. How would we add the sample search profile? In this case, I've got a client that does document destruction. So I'm going to go here and find a document destruction sample search profile. I see the keywords that um, incineration of documents that might not have been one that I thought about but it's right here in the sample search profile and these samples are based upon real bid abstracts that we've seen coming in over the last few years so if these are indeed all keywords that are appropriate for my client then what I do is I simply put them in here and there we go very simple there's no additional um, you know edits required, you can just put it straight in there. If it turns out that your client does not have any incinerating machines, then you just remove that one out and we, and we don't include that particular keyword. So that's how your samples might be included um, in a search profile that you submit to us. It's also important that you don't submit the singular and the plural forms of the same keyword. We'll take care of that for you. So again, if you, um, in, my, in my example, I put in the word document destruction, but clearly I'm also interested in documents destruction. So we will make sure that those types of um, singular and plurality uh, cases are taken into account. You don't have to put in all the variations um, of one keyword. Um, and then just to make life a little bit easier for you, you should be aware that you don't have to create redundancy. If your client does construction management, then you don't need to add school construction management or church construction management or bridge construction management. If the keyword construct or the key phrase construction management is already in the profile, then the other three terms that you see highlighted in red there become redundant. They don't do any harm. We are more than happy to include them in the search profile, but they may make it overall more difficult to read the profile once it's been created and set up. Plus, it's created extra work for you to, to enter all that information in there. So keep in mind that if you've got the basis of a phrase, then you don't need to do any other iterations of that exact same phrase. Um, and hopefully that makes sense. Last but not least, we really want to make sure that when you add in set aside terms that you truly intend to search for every single bid within that set aside category. Otherwise, there's no reason to add the set aside terms. We will match on all bids, whether set aside or not set aside. So if you put in 8A as a search term, you'll get every 8A bid within, you know, of course, the databases that you've selected within the FSG categories that you've selected and within the geographic region that you've selected. But that may be a lot more bids than what you wanted. If your client truly only wants 
8A set-aside bids, then we could add that as a restriction. But often we recommend against this because wouldn't the client also want to know if there's a perfect bid for them that didn't happen to be um, 8A set-aside, wouldn't they still want to match upon it? So generally speaking, the set-aside search um, terms really don't have a place in the in the search profile. Um, it's great that your client is 8A, um, you know, can can bid on 8A set-aside bids, um, but these are not terms for the search profile. Last but not least, talking about um, keywords, keep in mind that less is more when it comes to output. We don't want to overwhelm your client with hundreds of bid opportunities every single day. Most of you are working with small to medium-sized companies who have limited resources, and for them, they only want to look at bids that they can truly and realistically succeed with. They don't want to look at every single bid that may have been published within their industry. They want to look at those bids that best meet their criteria. So less is more when we talk about that is not with the keywords that you enter, sometimes keywords, we want to have as many keywords in the profile as possible, but less is more in terms of outputs. We don't want to give the client more than what they can realistically process. And if a client at first only gets one or two bids a week, tell them that the profile can grow with their business. Again, we talked earlier about the profile can be modified as many times as you want. So a client that receives at first limited output may want to get their feet wet with government contracting and once they've got some successes underneath their belt, we can broaden their profile and start looking at other opportunities. But what you want to do is you want to guarantee as much success for your clients as possible and that's giving them the best possible bid matches. And we're here to help you. Our search strategists are designed to work with you on creating these search profiles. We will give you recommendations. We will give you feedback on every single profile that gets created. Which takes us to codes. You'll notice right here in step five, we can enter in the keywords, but down below we can also enter in codes. You can use NAICS codes and or FSC codes to search um, against the bid opportunities. Generally speaking, we strongly recommend against using codes. Let's take an example. Of the 250,000 give or take bid abstracts that we process between January and March 31st of the year 2014, only 17% included a NAICS code, which means that if your search profile doesn't include any keywords, but you just put in a NAICS code, you're eliminating 83% of all bids. And how is that possible? Well, let's take um, the original statistics in mind. Remember that only 50% of our bids are coming from federal sources. State and local agencies and foreign agencies do not use the NAICS code. So we eliminate all those opportunities by searching for by NAICS code. We will never match on a state and local bid. We will never match on a foreign bid. Now that might be what your client wants, but that's okay. But even within the federal opportunities, 33% of the bid abstracts that we see do not contain a NAICS code. So if you're searching by NAICS code, you're missing out on a lot, a lot of bid opportunities. We have a fairly reasonable um, percentage of bids that include an FSC code. But both FSCs and NAICS codes are very, very broad. If your client does a specific type of product or a specific type of service, they're not necessarily going to want to see everything within that FSC code or everything within that NAICS code. NAICS codes not only make you miss opportunities, they also cause a lot of mismatches. Adding SIG codes or NIGP codes to a search profile is just unfortunately a waste of time. Very, very few bid abstracts these days include SIG codes or, NICs or NIGP codes. You can see that the percentage is so small I can't even say that. Um, there's just very few bids. So adding a SIG code or an NIGP code to your profile is essentially wasting your time, wasting our time, and potentially confusing your clients because they're seeing a code in there, thinking that they're matching on something, and they simply will not match on anything using those codes. So keep that in mind. Codes are not um, universal. Um, Different codes are used in different databases. Um, so searching on NAICS code means the client will never ever match with that code in a state and local bid and they need to make sure they understand it. 
And even within the specific agent, or within the specific databases, they're not used by every federal agency. NIGP codes simply are not used by state and local organizations from whom we receive the bid abstract. They may be used in the bid package, but again, all we match against is the bid abstract, which is a much shorter um, summary of what the bid package is all about. We talked about some of the resources already. We have the sample, my apologies, we have the sample search profiles available. If you want to see a listing of all of our state and local agencies, you can go to our website and take a look at all of the state and local agencies. And of course, we also have our iSearch interactive um, database available where you can go and do your own searches. Uh, you will have been given a username and password that allows you access to iSearch. Um, where you can do some queries before you create the search profile. Let's finish up the screen here. NAICS codes, FSC codes, again, my recommendation is to try and stay away from them as much as possible. And then the last step, step number six, is allowing you to add any additional comments that you may have. Please don't put any keywords here. Um, the comments that we see here will be processed as comments. They will not be processed as keywords. So please, if you've got, if you realize you've got some keywords that you want to add, go ahead and go back up here and add some additional keywords. Do not add your keywords in the comments area. When you're ready to click submit, you can click submit. This will submit the search profile to Outreach Systems. And as I mentioned before, you'll receive an email confirmation as soon as the profile has been set up, which should be within less than 24 hours. And that email confirmation will include the average number of bid matches your client can expect to receive. It will also include any kind of recommendations that we might have, suggestions, um, and you'll see a copy of the search profile with all the logic, wildcarding, um, and proximity statements that have been added. All right, once a profile is online, how can we edit it? So we're now going to talk about existing search profiles and how we can edit a profile that is already online. Let's take a look back in my Neocera database at a client who already has a search profile set up. I'm going to go to Central Coast Surveillance. This is one of my clients that's in my database. And you'll notice in the right-hand panel, if we scroll down, here you'll see that the bid match panel contains a little bit more information. It now tells us exactly um, who's going to be receiving the bid matches. Again, this is a demo database, so we've got um, a nobody email address. The format in which the client will be receiving the bid matches when the profile was originally created, when the profile was last edited, the total number of matches the client has received so far this month, the last time the client looked at their bid matches, and we also have access to the master index. We'll talk about um, the master index in a moment. But let's take a look at what the web page looks like for the client. This provides you a link into the web page that's your client's web page. You'll notice that it's a fairly uh, long web page that your client may want to bookmark, but they'll receive an email every day saying, hey, some new bids have been posted on your website. Please come take a look. Here we'll see when the client last read their bid matches so we can see whether this client is actively reading their bid matches or not. We can also get a sense for the volume of bid matches this client receives. This client receives what I would consider to be a fair number of bid matches every day, potentially more than what a small business can, can manage. So let's take a look and see if perhaps we can tweak this profile a little bit. To look at the search profile, we're going to click on the profile button. And here we see what the actual profile looks like that the client is matching on. So these are all the keywords. You'll see the um, wildcards in use here. You'll see the proximity statements in use. You'll see some of the restriction statements right here at the top. And we'll talk about all that right there. If the client is getting too many matches and you feel that perhaps you want to edit the search profile, what you can do is you can click the edit button. You can modify their email address, you can add additional keywords, but you can also delete some of the keywords. So perhaps if there's a, some keywords that are causing too many mismatches, what you can do is you can delete a particular keyword and say the client doesn't really um, you know, 
help with any kind of glass breakages. Um, so you can take those keywords offline and that change will be made automatic. Um, we can also update the state restrictions and we can add some additional comments. Perhaps you've got a question to one of our search strategists and looking for some recommendations in which case you can add some comments. So let's take a look here. If we wanted to add some state restrictions, the client was searching, you may remember, let's look up here, the client was searching in the state of California, Oregon and Washington. And perhaps for the time being, we just want them to search only in California to really narrow it down specifically to the region that the client, uh, where the client is located. And as I mentioned, again, you can add your comments. Based upon the changes that you've made, you can click Submit, and these changes will be made again by um, a person that will review the changes and confirm with you that they have been made. Let's take a look at that profile again and let's see if we can read it. I want to make sure that you're comfortable with the logic that we include in the search profile. Um, I mentioned before that I believe it's steps two, three, and four are restriction profile, are restriction um, steps. We restrict a client to certain databases. We restrict a client to certain FSG categories and we restrict a client to certain geographic areas. Those restrictions are going to be shown in the profile with a restrict statement. Let's take a look at this client's search profile. And right here you see that this client does not have any database restrictions. You notice how there's no database restrictions. That means that the client is searching all databases, all federal opportunities, all state and local opportunities, and all international opportunities. If the client was restricted to certain databases, then you would see this restrict sec for section, FedBiz, small, and bid, which would limit the client to the FedBizOps database. Remember I called, I told you earlier that the small database contains every other federal bid not otherwise published in FedBizOps and the bid database, which is the USA bid um, data. So if there was a database restriction, you'd see that line at the top. If the client is restricted by FSG categories, you would see the restrict cat colon and then the categories that the client is restricted to. This client is restricted to a number of categories, which means that they will only look for bids that are published within those federal supply groups. Um, and then last but not least, we identify what states the client is restricted to. Um, I think this is the same as what's in the search profile. The client can be restricted to the state of California, Oregon, or Washington. Remember that I mentioned earlier that it's best to let our search strategist add the wildcards. If you submit the wildcards, we certainly appreciate that. You're doing a little bit of our work for us and, and we, we welcome the assistance. Um, but keep in mind that once you add in your own logic, we won't overwrite that. So we'll put it in exactly as is. And sometimes that may not necessarily be the way we would recommend putting it in there. There are some keywords that we do recommend wildcarding with an asterisk, meaning that it will match an unlimited number of characters until the next space. Um, for example, design might match on designer or designing. Uh, design itself, designed, um, the asterisks will match on any one of those characters. But there's some th words like pin that we definitely don't want a wildcard with an asterisk because if the client sells pin or pins, then the question mark would be a much better um, wildcard to be used because the question mark only will match on pin or pins. Keep in mind that it will also match on pint, which is p pin with a T at the end. Um, so sometimes question marks and asterisks have to be used carefully because there's some variations of keywords where you don't necessarily want to match um, on any other characters. Let's take a look at this search profile. So we'll see here the monitor has an asterisk at the end. So we're matching on monitor, monitoring, uh, monitored, monitors, any any number of, key, of characters until the next space. The question mark on the other hand here will only match on system or systems. It will not match on anything else. It will not match on systematic in this case because there's not an asterisk there. It will match on system or systems. 
The brackets allow us to create proximity statements. Angle brackets are used to indicate that the keywords have to be close together. If there's nothing between the brackets, then the words have to be exactly next to each other. The only thing that can be in between is either a space or a dash. Nothing else can be allowed in between the keywords. So let's take a look here to see entry point. Here we have this as an actual keyword, so it could be entry dash point or entry space point. That's what we will match on, but nothing else. Um, it will not match on point of entry sensor. So keep that in mind when you're, you're putting in your own proximity. Generally speaking, we will try and put those proximities in there. If you do put a number between the brackets, then that indicates how many words can be in between um, your two primary keywords. And the U indicates whether the keywords can be ordered or unordered. Um, a lot of federal bids that are being issued have the words actually um, reversed. So we'll say valve comma butterfly. Whereas, you know, as humans, we would say, oh, I need to buy a butterfly valve. The way the buyers put it out is valve comma butterfly. So you wanna make sure that you, you allow for that keyword to be unordered and still match on it. So if your client sells butterfly valves, we wanna make sure that we put a proximity with the unordered marker in between. And again, here we see that alarm detection um, has a to U in between. So any bid that references wording such as uh, we need detection um, with an alarm system. Um, so the word with and un are two words that are not keywords, but they're still in between our true primary keywords. Um, so again, that proximity allows words to be related to one another in the sentence without being completely disjointed within an abstract. Oops. All right, that concludes our bid match presentation. Thank you all so much for joining me and hopefully you'll be able to create some wonderful profiles for your clients and we look forward to seeing your profiles online. Thank you all.